So the attention mechanism is known to be pretty slow. If you are not careful, the time complexity of the vanilla attention can be quadratic in the number of tokens in the input sequence. So we need to be smart about the computations we are doing when we are decoding text sequences. When we decode text, there are actually many tensors that we recompute over and over. So instead of recomputing them, we're going to cache them to save on computation. Let me show you how. So if you are building an application that is supposed to decode text, then there's a simple optimization that you can do to really increase the speed of the application. This is called KV caching. So let's look at this example. So we have an input prompt, machine learning is. The input prompt goes through the LLM. We have some hidden state that are generated by the LLM. And we have the language modeling head that is going to map the hidden states into predictions. So there's something very important to understand here. If we are decoding some text, we are only using the prediction that relates to the last token in the input sequence. So here we have six different tokens. Three of them are padding tokens. Out of the three last token, we are only using the predictions that relates to the last token. So here we have the token is. Its corresponding prediction is this vector. So let's assume that if we were to decode in a greedy manner, the token that would be decoded would be the word fun. We only need the predictions for the is token to generate the fun token. And as a consequence, we only need the hidden states that relates to these predictions. All the other hidden states are not used in the decoding process. So we only need the hidden state related to the is token. When we generate text, we only need to predict the next token. So let's look what happens in the self-attention layer. So again, we have the input sequence, we have the word or token embeddings, and here we have the three different projection matrix that exist into the self-attention layer. When we input the input sequence into the word token embedding, in the end, what we need from the projection matrix is a query vector for the word is. We need all the keys that relates to all the tokens in the input sequence. And we need all the values that relate to all the tokens in the input sequence. But for the query, to generate the next token, you only need the query vector that relates to the last token. So we build an interaction vector between the query of the word is and the keys of the other tokens. We pass this interaction vector through a softmax transformation, and we get the self-attentions for the word is. Now we use these self-attentions to build a weighted average of the values of all the input tokens to get the hidden states for the token is. So in the end, if we want to generate the next token, the token after the token is, we only need the hidden state for the token is. But to compute this hidden state, we need all the keys of all the input tokens and all the values of all the input tokens. Now, let's consider the next iteration. Let's assume that the token that was generated in the previous iteration was a token fun. And because we auto-regress, we append this token to the input sequence. Now, we pass this input sequence through the self-attention layer, and we generate all the keys for all the input tokens in the input sequence. We generate all the values for all the tokens in the input sequence, but we only need to generate the query vector related to the token fun. So let's make sure we understand. This vector relates to the word fun. This vector relates to the word is. This vector relates to the token learning. And this vector relates to the token machine. Those vectors that were computed in this iteration have exactly the same value that in the previous iteration. So we recomputed vectors that have the same values. So this is very inefficient. So in principle, what we could do, because we have the same value, is to cache those instead of recreating them, recomputing them. So the way to do it is to introduce a cache, some kind of local database that is going to cache the value of those vectors. We need to compute the key for the new token fun. We need to compute the query for the new token fun. 
and we need to compute the value for the new token fund, we're going to cache them into the KV cache. And now that they are cached, we're going to pull from the cache the keys and values of the previous tokens. They were computed in the previous iterations of the decoding process, so we don't need to compute them again. We can just pull them from the KV cache. This assumes that at each iteration, we were able to cache the different keys and values of the different tokens. And now that we pulled them from the KV cache, we can continue the computation of the hidden state like usual. So we compute the iteration vector between the word fun and all the other tokens in the input sequence. We pass this interaction vector through the softmax transformation and we get the self-attentions for the token fun. And now we can use these self-attentions to compute the weighted average of the values related to all the tokens in the input sequence to compute the hidden state for the next token. So let's summarize the KV caching process. So we have the prompt with the new token. So for example, machine learning is and fun is a new token. We generate the new key query and value vectors. We cache them into the KV cache. So we update the cache with the new key and value for the new token fun. Then we load the previous keys and values from the KV cache. They are cached in the KV cache. And by using the new vectors and the cached keys and values, we can compute the new hidden states and compute the predictions for the next token. So by caching the keys and values, we save a lot of computation and the decoding process becomes much faster. So we typically have two phases in the KV caching process. We have the generation phase where we are computing the keys, values, and queries for the initial prompt that is sent to the LLM. In the generating phase, we can populate the KV cache. And we have then the decoding phase where we can utilize what is within the KV cache to continue the decoding process. We save a lot of time with this trick. That is the reason that when we use Claude or ChatGPT, the first token takes much longer to be generated than the following tokens. KV caching is great, but it takes a lot of memory though. So KV caching is a huge improvement when it comes to the decoding process. But there are some inefficiencies in the common implementation of this KV caching. So typically, there are a lot of overhead in allocating dynamically the cache. So the way it is done is that the memory for the cache is pre-allocated to the maximum output size for the decoded sequence, which means that when we have an input sequence, machine learning is, we pre-allocate the memory regardless of the actual size that will be decoded. And then we little by little populate the KV cache. For example, here we are populating the KV cache with the related keys and values vectors. And as we decode the sequence, we update the cache. So here this is the token that relates to fun. As we decoded this token, we now populate the cache with the related keys and values. And at this point of the decoding process, there's a lot of unused memory that are still pre-allocated and that cannot be used by other processes. So this pre-allocation of the memory for KV caching consumes a lot of memory that makes it difficult to have other parallel processes in the same time. So let's look at an example. Let's look at Llama 3 with 70 billion parameters. So the hidden size is 8192. The number of layers is 80 and the maximum number of output tokens is 4,096. So let's look at this computation that computes the memory that we need for one token. We need two because for each token, we have a key and a value. We have 8,192 because this is a number of elements per vector. And we have to do that in each attention layer. And we have 80 attention layers. And each element consumes 16 bits or two bytes. If they are stored in float 16, it's 16 bits or two bytes. And this amount to 2.62 megabytes per token to be allocated in the KV cache. This is the amount of memory per token. Because the strategy has been to pre-allocate the memory for all the tokens that can be decoded in the output sequence, we need to multiply this 2.62 megabyte by 
4086 and this amount to 10.73 gigabytes of memory that we need to pre-allocate when we are decoding a sequence with LAMA3. That's a lot of memory just to pre-allocate for a decoding process. KV caching can be a limiting factor when it comes to scalability. So it can be important to find improvement to free the memory. And this is what the page attention is doing. So one typical improvement of a KV caching is what we call the page attention. So there's a lot of overhead to dynamically allocate memory for KV caching, but we can actually optimize this by pre-allocating in chunk the memory for the KV caching. So instead of allocating the memory that we would need for the whole maximum size output sequence, we allocate it in chunk, so somewhat dynamically, and we don't allocate more than what we actually need. So let's assume here that we pre-allocated a chunk of memory. So it's much smaller than what we did in the typical KV caching. We have a small chunk of memory that is pre-allocated. We can populate the cache that corresponds to the input sequence. And as we decode the output sequence, we populate the cache and we pre-allocate new chunks of memory as we need. This is good because it is possible that the generated output sequence will be short and we may not need to allocate as much memory as the maximum output size. So here we reallocate a new chunk of memory and we're going to consume it as we need. And we may not need to allocate additional chunks of memory. So this allows a better utilization of the memory and this allows concurrent processes. For example, when you decode sequences in batch, you will need to allocate KV caches for each of the sequences you are decoding. So if you have a lot of pre-allocated memory, you're not going to be able to decode a lot of sequences. So this is a good optimization and this will allow you to decode more sequences at once.